Hello, my name is Jorge Casillas from the University of Granada, Spain. In a previous tutorial, we saw how to obtain both training and test prediction in order to analyze the overfitting. For example, in this case, we saw how to get this table to obtain the G-mean in training, test, and the ratio between these two measures. So we can compare different settings of our algorithm to see which combination of parameters is better for a better balance between training and test. However, when we saw this solution and we used loop end with two inputs, this node, we were not able to add more information than only training and test. For example, it will be interesting to gather a third table in each uh, iteration with the model size generated. And we have only two parts, so how can we add this extra information? Let's going to see how to do it in this video. Now we will have three outputs first for training, second for test, and the third, in our case, will be the model size that we are putting all together here. The solution is like that. We can combine the two tables, training and test, in one table, like this, so we will have one input, here and the node and then we will use row splitter to separate the table again in the two original one training and test to do that what we can do is to add a column that i call it tra bar tst in our case for the first data set will be training and for the second one we are using the word TST. So we will concatenate and then we have a unique table where the column here distinguish between training and here we have test. This will be the input to the loop end, this first input. The second input will be the number of leaves we saw in a, uh, in another video how to obtain the model size of each iteration. And this will be the two inputs. Remember that in this node, we have to use this option, unique row IDs by appending a suffix. So after finishing the loop, we need to generate or split the table to generate the original training and test and we can do it with row splitter so we use the column test tra bar tst choose include rows by attribute value and then we use the word tra so the this will be the first output training as we can see here, we have now only the, the values, the rows of training. And the second port will have the output of test, as we can see here. And then we can connect with these two outputs. On the other side, we have the model size here. And after finishing the, the the loop we have this table um, well this row id don't looks so nice so we can use string manipulation to generate a new column what we call it row id with row and the number of iteration as we are seeing here then with row id we rename the rows id to get the more appropriate uh, names. And that's all. Now we have these three outputs and the third one can be 
gathered here in model size. So what we do, we sort the, the these, two, these uh, tables, the iteration and model size that we are getting here. First iteration and then to attach all the model size columns. So we prefer to resort it and then column filter to choose only the model size of the other inputs. With column appender, finally we get this. First column is iteration and then one column per model size of each one of the different inputs. Now we apply statistics to obtain something like that. We are interested on this mean value of this. this, uh, this. So now we are going to choose this column mean with column filter and with row filter we choose just the model size like this. This row filter is just exclude rows my number, first row number, last row number and then we choose, we obtain this uh, row. Column appender for including the column with the name of the algorithms as we have been doing in other tutorials row id to rename it rename the column and finally we have this row id with the name of the algorithms according to the input table and then the model the average model size of the five runs of five for, by, of our cross validation and that's all we can attach this column to the one, the one that we obtained in the, in the, uh, here, as we saw in a previous tutorial, and then we have here training, test, overfitting, and now we have this fourth column with the average model size of time, which it the different settings. As we can see here, depending of the configuration, when we are doing a harder pruning, as here, the balance is better between training and test, and the model size is much lower than without pruning. So even when the test is not so much improved, here we have a, a very slight improvement in the test, but anything statistically significant, at least we are obtaining a by far more simple model and it is better to understand to interpret to interpret the the knowledge um, explain how the model is making decisions okay that's all i hope you enjoy the video bye